Best of r slash tales from tech support episode 113. Subscribe for Reddit videos daily. Fist time posting, and on mobile. So apologies for any issues. Cast, me, not explaining who this is. User, network user calling for help. Me, thank you for calling redacted how may I assist you today. User, yes. When getting set up today my cat walked on my keyboard and hit the ESC key. Now my laptop is asking for a recovery key. Me. Okay. That's a new one. Me and the user laugh as I generate and read off the recovery password. Me. You are able to log in now. Was that everything you needed help with today? User. Yes. Thank you for helping me with my catastrophe. Thank you. Next. Long ago, at my first job as a consultant, one of our clients was a retirement community, with everything from senior apartments to end-of-life care, and a resident requested internet, we would show up to make the room live for internet access. This was basically hooking up a cable in the switch room to make the resident's room live, go into the resident's room and make sure the computer is connected. It's a 15-minute job. I get a ticket, and make my way over to the site. I was about 19 at the time. Loved helping the older folks at this site, as I never really had grandparents of my own. Get to the site. Make the connection in the switch room, and wander over to the resident's apartment, where I'm greeted by a husband and wife in their late 60s early 70s. Me, me slash res, resident wife slash resh, resident husband. Me, hi I have gotten everything set up on the back end, now I need to come in and make the port you want live inside your apartment, and test that everything is up and running. Res, absolutely come on in. In the room there is a panel I had to take off. To make the ethernet port live, in the room the computer is in. I ask Resh where the computer is located. He shows me the room the computer is in. I then make my way over to the panel to make the port live. As I'm doing my thing he asks. Resh, how long have you been doing this? Me, I'm still in school, but was lucky enough to get a job with this consulting company as well. Resh, on the job training, like it should be. He smiles. Me, yes sir, okay. You are good here, let's go look at your computer. I sit down, and all looks good. We chat for a few moments about my schooling, along with Res when Resh's quite active lives. They also were bribing me with snacks, being the college kid. I happily sit and listen for a bit, as I got ready to head out. They ask me, Res, could you help with some odd and did computer things? They wanted Thunderbird set up, and a few other things, that I don't remember anymore. We are not contracted to provide these types of services, unless asked by the retirement community. Me, I tell you what, I will stop back after my workday is done. Would that work for you? Res well, don't eat before you get here, you will get a meal out of it for your trouble. After I get done with my day, I drive back over to the retirement community. When I get to the resident's apartment, they both greet me and I sit down and set up everything that they wanted me to get set up as I munch on home cooked food. I get done, sit and chat for a bit. As I get ready to head out, Resh tries to hand me money. Me, no, no, you paid me in food, that's all I need. Resh, sternly, number, you're a college kid, I have grandkids your age, take it, as he stuffs it into my backpack. I thanked him and give him a handshake. Me, do you want to adopt another grandkid? Resh, we would love that. So, I got a free meal, $40, and got to meet some awesome people. Thank you. Next. I developed an online app for a company to consolidate data across systems because having to log into multiple systems and then mentally visualize the data connections is a pain in the a dollar sign dollar sign. Users, it'll certified service managers, of my online app had to log in and just to click on the approved or the rejected button for standard operating procedure which would then be reported to higher management. Now, this is an internal only tool and I designed it so that it's easy to use. Users who don't need to approve or reject anything could just view the data without logging in. Also, I was the only developer and only one to support for this tool. Cast, service manager, SM, my supervisor, sup, me, me, sup, hey I just got this call from this really important senior service manager about your tool. Can I transfer the call? Me, sure. Sup. Now, 
she's really important and very good friend of mine. Me. Foreshadowing stupid questions if my supervisor and this service manager are very good friends yeah. Okay. 15 seconds later. SM. Hi. I'm trying to use your tool and I can't seem to accept or reject anything. Me. Ah. Have you logged in? Because you have to log in if you need to accept or reject anything. SM. Of course I've logged in. Your system is broken and you need to fix it. Me. Well. I don't see any issues when I access the system. Can you explain what you're seeing? SM. I logged in. Nothing works. Get IT working. Me. Alright. It's going to be like that okay. I've checked that nothing is blocking your account. Can you tell me what you see on the screen? SM. I see your broken system. Me. Describe what you see. Ignore that you think it's broken. SM. I see the home page. When I click on things, it works. But I cannot approve or reject anything. Why can't you fix this? Me. Hold on. Let me diagnose a bit more. Do you see the horizontal menu bar? SM. Yes. Me. Do you see the drop down menus that say blah 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 and blah 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 and blah blah blah? SM. Yes. 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 Me. Okay. At the very right most option. What do you see? SM. What do you mean? Me. Well. You should see your name right the end of that line. SM. Well. It's not there. Me. So what does it say? SM. It says please low. Click. She hung up because the system was telling her to log in. Thank you. Next. Years ago I ran my own PC repair shop in a small town. Small enough that word of mouth works better than advertising in the yellow pages. A business near my shop had lost internet and called me to check it out. I show up and look at their PC. Up. No internet. Did anyone move it or disconnect the cables? I'm not seeing link lights. Nope. So. I trace the cable back to a patch panel. Which then runs to their trailer house. The shop was their garage. Which runs to their router under their TV. No power. Which runs to the wall wart unplugged with a happy looking little doggo nearby. Here's your problem, sir. Plugged in the plug. Walked back to the shop slash garage. And voila. Internet. Didn't have the heart to charge him for plugging in a plug the doggo obviously knocked out. Thank you. Next. 39 years ago I did telephone tech support for a computer hardware company. We made controller boards to connect mini computers to printers. I was learning on the job do I kept a detailed card file of each user's symptoms and ultimate resolution. So that over time I evolved a paper database of problems mated with solutions. I learned early on that users lie. Usually they have some sort of strategy for lying. To avoid blame. Or get something free. Or make themselves look good. Whatever. Then there was Randy and New Orleans. He haunted my open tickets. The board his company bought. For many thousands of dollars. Arrived and he said it didn't work. Not a peep out of the printer. We tested the boards before we shipped them out. But things happen. So we sent him another one. Expedited. Figuring to get back the one that failed later after his problem was resolved. He said it didn't work either. This was weird because we had a very low failure rate. So the rate squared, for two failures, was minuscule. We sent a third and he said the same thing. Now we were worried, was something in his system burning out boards? I also wondered who would pay for them. We were the off-brand solution that tried harder so I figured it would be us. The engineers had a meeting with the head of manufacturing. Finally we decided to send him one more board, after the VP of engineering tested it himself. We didn't hear from Randy for a few days. So I put a couple of calls into him and left messages. Finally his boss called me back. Randy was no longer with the company. It turned out he didn't know how to install the controller boards. So rather than admit ignorance and ask for help he just kept claiming they didn't work. The boss tested all four. And they all worked. So he kept the first one and sent back the other three. He was a loyal customer after that because we tried harder and went the distance to get him up and running. What I could never figure out was what Randy's endgame was. Was he going to just keep claiming every board we sent failed? Forever? Was he stalling to make it through one more paycheck? Was he hoping his boss would give up on using a printer they'd already paid for? With their, approximately $100,000, many computer and live without printouts? Or was he just a fool who didn't think about the future? I'll never know. 
but I do know that customers will lie even when it makes no sense. Thank you. Next. TL. Doctor at bottom. In the late 90s I was working for a small consulting company on the Jersey Shore. One of our clients was a company in Newark whose entire business was designing of all things, the finials that go on the ends of curtain rods. The company was run by a very demanding, very German man, let's call him Hans to protect the guilty. He had absolutely zero respect for anyone that worked for him, much less any contractors, so naturally everyone hated going to that site. While I was on the parkway home one afternoon, my boss called and told me his computer was randomly powering off while he was using it. I got off at the next exit to turn around and slog back into Newark, resigning myself to having to deal with him. I arrived and wound my way into the studio where he worked. His computer was set up with his monitor, etc. On a built-in work table, with the tower below on the floor. Since random power offs are usually due to either heat or memory problems. I crawled under the table and whipped the cover off the tower. Sure enough, the computer was full of dust and cloth fuzz, and it had clogged the CPU fan. I powered off the computer, removed the heat sink and fan, and cleaned everything out as best as I could. I powered it back on, ready to run some benchmarks to put some load on it so I could make sure that had fixed the problem. As soon as it started back up, while I'm still on the floor half under the table, he comes up leans over the top of me, and begins to use his computer. I'd already had a long day, and I'd had enough of his crap over the last few months, so, I snapped. I snaked around him and out from under the table and stood up. Hans, wait a minute. Hans, he looked at me and blinked, as if he'd just seen someone with two heads. Hans, I continue, when you take your car to the mechanic, do you sit behind the wheel and rev the engine while he's working on it? No he says. Then don't do it to me. He backed off. I finished my test, and gave him the work slip to sign. He signed it without saying much at all, and I jumped back in the company car and headed back to the office to turn in my slips for the day. About 15 minutes later, my cell phone rings and it's the owner of my company. Welp, here we go. I thought, boss, what did you say to Hans? I told him the story exactly as related above. Boss, humph. That's weird. He just called me and told me that no one other than you is allowed to work on his computer. I guess he was just waiting for someone to stand up to him. TL. Doctor, I get angry at a trouble customer and tell him off. He responds by calling the owner of my company to insist I be the only one to ever work on his computer. Thank you. Next. Yesterday, the production database ran out of tablet space, causing prod to go down. Here are the following comedy of errors that led to this. Yesterday morning, I get a ticket from the DBAs requesting 500 gigabytes of additional space for the DB data volume. I extended the volume. DBA accidentally copies me on an email requesting peer review of the commands to extend the tablet space. Prod fails later in the afternoon when the tablet space fills up. My boss's boss asks me if the volume filled up, and if there was an issue with the monitoring system. I tell him that I extended the volume, and I'm not sure why the DBAs didn't extend the tablet space right then. I then get to tell him that my monitoring system doesn't monitor the tablet space for that DB. Why, you ask? Well, the monitoring scripts used by my system require some specific information. Namely, the tablet space name and alert threshold. When they asked me a few years ago, I requested the required data to configure the monitor, and their response is, just have the script monitor everything. I explained that I can't tell the script to monitor. I have to have the tablet space name. No follow up was ever given. No biggie, because I'm assured that they have their own monitor in place. The nature of their monitor is not shared with me. Today, the current DBA manager asks me about the monitor. I explain why my monitoring system isn't configured to monitor this database. I give him the config for the database that is being monitored, so if he wants to push his team to get me the appropriate data, they can. He tells me that he's been pushing his team to fix OEM for the past 6 months. They checked their monitoring system, which is a cron job that runs once a day, and was disabled. I have a feeling that the DBAs are about to get yelled for this. I'm just glad that it's not my fault.